so living in the Swedish countryside with nature just uh, by your doorstep. How is that possible considering work, daycare, schools, grocery shopping, Wi-Fi and all of those services that we are used to having really close by? That is actually one of the most frequently asked questions here on my channel and today I am here to answer that question. I'm also going to share three important tips of how to be more productive working from home just like me. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but I work mostly from home as a digital communicator, working mostly with social media and also I work as a photographer. And even though it is quite possible to get a job and live in the Swedish countryside, I still want to include this because it will facilitate you moving out to the countryside much faster. If you find this video helpful or you think that someone else would find it helpful, please share it. Uh, give me a thumb up if you think I deserve it and if you want to see more content like this about Swedish life and uh, Swedish traditions. Before I begin, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Uh, thank you Skillshare for supporting my channel, my work and my lifestyle so that I can keep sharing this with others through the magic of YouTube. So if you follow me for a while, you know that I've been living in a red house uh, out in the countryside in Sweden. And I've been living in this little village for several years. And this, uh, this village and my house might look very sort of off-grid. And in some aspects it is, but in some aspects not so much. So this place is calm, uh, there's not a lot of traffic uh, other than the people living here and um, there's a lot of wildlife. Uh, you can regularly see animals like elks and deers, foxes, lynxes and so much more. So if you live here, the forest is basically at your doorstep and it feels very far away from the busy and stressful uh, city life. But the wonderful thing in Sweden is that our rural areas or the countryside are quite accessible and we have a functional infrastructure which makes it easy to live out in the countryside but still have those services that you need fairly close by. And of course what is close and what is not it's all relative. Just to give you some insights what it's been like for me living like this, here are some facts. So from my house and this little village that you've seen um, you can find uh, daycare, uh, preschool and grade uh, 1 to 6 about 10 minutes away by car. And of course it is easier if you have a car but there are also buses going to school and to, to preschool. If you go by car it's 25 minutes to a large grocery store, 30 minutes to the city center of Uppsala which is Sweden's fifth largest city, about 35 minutes to a large hospital. And in Uppsala, you can of course find things like a uh, university if you want to keep your studies. Uh, maybe you want to go to the gym, you have uh, restaurants, cafes, shops and much more. Basically everything that you might want or need. And for me, why I've chosen to live like this for a long time is that I love having nature really, really close by. Um, I get to experience the beautiful changes in seasons in a way that I personally don't get to experience uh, living in a larger city. I just love when I start noticing these early signs of spring with flowers popping up everywhere and the weather getting gradually warmer and warmer. And then spring turning into summer, you know, the summer season with all of that that season has to offer everything from you know fresh blueberries in the forest to foggy uh, mornings uh, with chirping birds and so on. And then we have the colorful autumn and the harvest season when nature you know have these rapid changes from summer you know being super green and all and then when everything suddenly feels golden and uh, the trees just exploding in different colors. And of course you cannot forget the Swedish winter. You know the air starts getting really crispy and finally we have frost, snow and you suddenly live in a world that feels like it's wrapped in a diamond and cotton candy blanket. But maybe you're not that kind of rural area type of gal or guy but still you don't really feel like living in the busy and stressful city center. There are actually other options. 
you can choose to live in a smaller town like this one where I am currently located since I am in the process of moving. It has a hospital and uh, also dental care. Uh, there are veterinarians for your furry babies, uh, several grocery stores, a library, there are schools, antique shop, a second hand store, uh, you can find restaurants here, coffee shop and also actually an art lab with different exhibitions. And there are so much more to explore in this cute little town. Also it is located just by the water. And it is about 30 to 35 minutes away from two other larger cities with a larger hospital and of course other services that you might want to have close by. And if you would want to live in the countryside in a red house with you know white trims with nature even closer by it takes about five minutes by car from this little town to get to a cozy countryside area. And this makes it easy to find a job uh, within any profession from being a nurse to a school teacher or anything in between. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I work mostly from home as a digital communicator within social media uh, and I also work as a photographer and I do make videos like this for myself and for other companies and, and brands. And a question that I get a lot is how can I do what you do? Um, and uh, you know, working from home, living in the Swedish countryside, do I have any helpful tips? So some tips might feel very simple, but the thing is, these are tips that it's really easy to forget them or overlook them, both in the beginning, but when you work from home for a while, you know, being your own boss. And hence, I think these are tips that are really, really good to remind yourself of, no matter if you work for one month or 10 years. These are tips that ensure that I get the result I want uh, without feeling overworked and super stressed. Take responsibility for being on top of your game in your profession. So in Sweden at least, if you are employed in a more regular 9 to 5 job, your employer will ensure that you go on different classes, courses, workshops to sort of keep being on top uh, within your skill or even evolving it, getting more knowledge um, so that you can improve uh, within the career or the profession that you have. So this means that you're both getting actual uh, experience uh, from a specific profession while you work, but you will also uh, sort of grow uh, your knowledge base and maybe uh, be, being able to take on more responsibility and then being able to get a higher salary. So this is re something that's really, really good if you are employed um, at a regular nine to five job. So if you have your own business, you need to take responsibility for for this yourself and that is because you need to stay on top of your game you know you need to be able to adapt to different trends or changes in the marketplace you need to maybe learn a new skill to market yourself better and so on and the way I do this and I've done the past years is that I do this through Skillshare so Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for uh, creative and curious people that want to learn a new skill uh, or improve an existing one. So why I am showing you this class in particular is because it is a favorite of mine and that is because Matti the teacher he goes through the whole wedding day and he has uh, divided uh, the whole wedding day into sections and then he goes through each section, you know, how and what to capture, as well uh, as things to be mindful about when you shoot a wedding. And another reason why I think that this video is great is you can also apply this method of thinking through the whole day, no matter if it's for YouTube or uh, for a client of yours. And one class that I've taken is this one. And it's been really beneficial for me in terms of productivity and basically uh, being more organized. 
and I've taken many classes or if you want to call them courses or workshops through Skillshares. I'm going to put a list in the description below where you can see what courses I've been taking and what I recommend for you. So Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership to the first thousand people who click the link in the description box to help you explore your creativity. And after that it is only about $10 a month. So go and check out the description under my video here on YouTube if you are curious to learn more and check out my favorite classes. Better done than perfect. Chasing perfection and procrastinating. So what does that mean? Well, when you work uh, for yourself, you're having your own business, especially in the beginning, it's really easy to get stuck in the smaller details, which then actually stops you from getting an, any actual work done. So this can be things like, you know, really obsessing over the color scheme for your brand or chasing that per perfect logo for your brand, even you just got started, uh, getting stuck in smaller details for your business card or maybe your website design. And it's easy to hide behind, you know, I am a perfectionist. And then hence you can, you know, let yourself get stuck in those little details. Uh, believe me, I have done so myself when I got started. But using perfection as a reason to get stuck in the details, not moving forward with your business, it's usually more about being afraid of being judged and not being perfect. Uh, it's about comparing yourself to others uh, within your uh, little corner of the business world. And hiding behind perfection is a trap that leads to inaction. Focus on progress rather than perfection. Focus on getting it done good enough. And this might sound simple, but it actually takes a lot of hard work for many of us to master this skill. Number three, and this one actually been so beneficial for me, get organized and have a routine. And this tip is sort of uh, self-explanatory, but it's still easily overlooked or just basically forgotten. My experience is that it's easy that, you know, a few weeks in or a few months in running your own business from your home, you find yourself in sweatpants or yoga pants, messy hair, maybe you didn't even brush your teeth or eat breakfast. And, you know, as the days and weeks go by, you don't feel very productive and you don't get a lot of stuff done. So for me, this means that I try to dress the part, uh, and, you know, looking like I'm running a successful business. And I brush my hair, I brush my teeth, and I change out of the morning yoga pants. And I have a routine for checking social media and updating social media, for, uh, you know, reading emails and replying immediately, and this has been crucial for me. I never read an email if I cannot reply immediately because it makes it much more easy to stay on top of things and not forget or miss business opportunities. And of course, this might look different for different people. For me, for example, I love batch working because it makes me really productive. I love a structure around social media and around checking my emails, or I would be checking them a little bit all the time, which wouldn't make me very productive. So, Whatever you're doing, be mindful of how you spend your time, especially if you are struggling. Maybe you just need a little bit more structure. So my YouTube friends, what are you dreaming about? Do you want to move to the Swedish countryside or the countryside in another country? What are you currently working with? Do you dream of starting your own business? Uh, please share in the comment section, I would love to know. And then, as always, I think you know the drill by now. Until I see you next time, puss, hook down.